Bastion Berlin is in the books, and here is a quick little review because that was a quick little PLE. Kind of forgettable, actually, and wow. That's a really good hook for a YouTube video, but you know what? It kind of was, so just got to call it like I see it. But first, would you like to win this belt? Of course you would. All you got to do, comment below at 10,000 subscribers. You can win. Why am I doing this? Because I am on a quest. A quest to quit my day job and produce videos all the time. I want to become a full-time YouTuber. So I got to get my subscribers and my engagement up. Comment below and you can win this belt for real. Free shipping, free everything. Let's get into the PLE though. So match number one was Cody Rhodes versus Kevin Owens and oh man, I swear to you guys, I like Cody Rhodes. I swear to you, I actually love Cody Rhodes and I know I come across as a giant hater and I'm going to come across as an even bigger hater because this match it ticked me off. You can go watch my live stream and see how mad I got at how they portrayed Cody Rhodes here. First off, he's opening the PLE again. I get it. They're in Germany. Gunther's going to main event, but oh, this does not make Cody look good. This doesn't help Cody's case that he's a main event player because he is opening PLEs left and right. In fact, the only reason why he probably closed SummerSlam was because Roman Reigns returned. And Roman Reigns is only staying in that main event. But Cody, whoo, put him first on the card. Ouch. Ouch. And before you go into it, I get it. Roman didn't always main event, but usually those were because there were attraction matches like Royal Rumbles and Elimination Chambers. For the most part, Roman did kind of main event. I think there was maybe one that he did it that didn't have one of those big matches. But regardless, regardless, Cody won. We all knew it was going to happen. The big storyline going into this was... Is Kevin Owens going to turn? And then on SmackDown, the revelation that Cody had a knee injury. Oh, this is what ruined it. This is what just totally killed it for me. And in reality, it killed it for two characters. It made Kevin Owens look, I don't know, what did he look? Stupid? Weak? Combination of the two? And Cody Rhodes, it made him look definitely weak. Cody Rhodes tweaked his knee at some point on like a Cody cutter or something. And suddenly his knee is injured. And... Kevin Owens doesn't capitalize. Kevin Owen doesn't capitalize. Of all the characters, the only person who would turn on his friends quicker than Kevin Owens is Randy Orton. Okay, Kevin Owens did not capitalize. In fact, there he is, injured, Cody Rhodes, and Kevin Owens hesitates. He's like, oh, I can't really do it. I can't. And then he does it one time and then he just completely backs off. He does a powerbomb on the ring apron. He doesn't really go for the kill. And then he loses. It protects good guy Kevin Owens, but good guy Kevin Owens, like, he's lame. I want to see bad guy Kevin Owens. And what about Cody Rhodes' title reign? I just did a video talking about how weak Cody Rhodes' title reign is, and this makes it look even weaker. If that was possible, the only reason why Kevin Owens gets a match to begin with is because Cody feels like he deserves it, even though he's lost left and right. And then... He can't even beat him without sympathy, without Kevin Owens holding back because his knee is injured and Kevin Owens doesn't want to hurt him more because they're friends. Oh, wow. This was, this was bad. This was bad. It made, it made Cody look horrible. It made him look absolutely weak and just pathetic. I, I mean, I can't, I don't know how else to put it. There was a match, it was a triple threat with Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, and Asuka. And the entire match, they just laid into Bianca Belair's knee. And we all thought she couldn't win. And then she pulled it off, right? She pulled it off. And we were all like, wow, that's a strong champion. Now, she did get cashed in in about like a matter of 30 seconds later. But that's beside the point. The fact of the matter is, she he beat Charlotte Flair and Asuka with a hurt knee, but Cody, he can't. He needs he needs someone to pull sympathy card on him in order to win his matches. Brett the Hitman Hart, the goody two-shoe Brett the Hitman Hart, his whole matches revolved around injuring somebody's leg. All right, even Bret Hart would take advantage of an injured wrestler in order to win and hold on to that title, but Cody. He opens the PLE, and he can't even beat a pity contender because the pity contender takes pity on him because he's hurt. It made Cody look horrible, and it made Kevin look, I don't know, I wouldn't say stupid, but kind of like a chump. Made Kevin Owens look like a chump. And maybe Kevin will turn on SmackDown, but as of right now, walking out of Berlin, 
not happy with the conclusion of that match. Cody should have won. I get that, but mm, not a good, not a good outcome. In fact, that's gonna be a theme of this PLE, where it's like the right winner might have won, but the way they did it, the the ending kind of. Had, had me scratching my head. The next match we have the Unholy Alliance versus Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. In my live stream, someone told me that they're called the Unholy Alliance and I guess they're witches? I didn't really know that. I didn't really know that. They don't really play that up. It's kind of weird that their name is the Unholy Alliance and they don't do anything that is unholy. They should have some kind of gimmick that is demonic, satanic, something, because why are they unholy? But regardless of the fact, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill, they won nothing really to say here they were the right winners because those tag team titles only matter when they're on Jade and Bianca Belair I don't have much to say here other than yeah they they won <laughs> okay cool I felt this should have been on the Smackdown maybe and we could have had LA Knight's open challenge on the PLE but that's just it is what it is they won Cool. Then we had a strap match for the second most coveted prize in WWE right behind the Ula Fala with a bracelet match. CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. They had a pretty good fight. They they whipped each other with the strap. They had moments where you thought a very predictable outcome was going to happen where Drew is hitting all the turnbuckles and Punk is doing it right behind. That's how I actually thought the match was going to end, but it kept going and they just really wanted to beat each other up and at the end of the day CM Punk hit all the turnbuckles my only my only real problem with this match was I was hoping that CM Punk would win by tying Drew McIntyre's feet together or sneakily hitting the four posts that way Drew could have came out looking strong and you could say well it took four go to sleeps in order to beat him well not really CM Punk had two go to sleeps on him and he was pretty much done CM Punk just kept coming back for more punishment he was doing it to punish him so when you do it like that it doesn't make Drew McIntyre look strong he was out a while ago he just CM Punk just wanted to hurt him more I felt that CM Punk should have won just not like this he should not have won so decisively now he did get the bracelet back and I thought it would have been cool if Drew McIntyre had broken the bracelet in front of CM Punk and that could have been like he could have got the bracelet out of play and drawn a lot of heat on the match but nah he hits four go to sleeps in between hitting the four ring posts for a few that's been so red hot I don't know it, it is kind of cooling down and I'm not a hater on the bracelet either but I do hope that the bracelet is now out of play or maybe on Monday he breaks the bracelet and then it's out of play for good the next match was the mixed match we have uh, Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan versus versus Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. This was an interesting one. I thought Liv and Dominic should have won, but we went with Rhea and Priest, which was, you know, that was smart money. That was smart money that those two were gonna win and they won. So it's like, okay, well, no surprises. And that's fine. Honestly, I'm fine with them winning. I just don't like how they won because Judgment Day came in, all Judgment Day came in and they could not thwart Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. And if that's the case, where do we go from here? Who cares? If the combined efforts of an entire stable cannot stop somebody from winning a match, then there's no point in that stable. Now Judgment Day is a joke to me. Everybody said that leading in to this match, that Judgment Day was just getting beat up too much by Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley, except for one week. There was one week where the Judgment Day came on top, but for the most part, it's been all Rhea, all Damian Priest, it should have been Dominic and Liv to win because the Chicken Heels could have had so much bragging rights and then Damian Priest and Finn Balor could have had their fight when Finn cost Damian the match again, but no. Damian Priest won, so who cares? Okay, so now he's going to get a match against Finn Balor and I don't really care. I don't care anymore. I get it, Rhea still needs to win the title and there's still things that need to happen, but what's the purpose of the Judgment Day? Just... Just Finn Balor, just go out and fight, go out and lose, and keep them back there playing PlayStation 5 because they're not going to help you, because they cannot help you, because they have shown that they're complete failures. Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. Those two are going to always dominate the Judgment Day from this point forward, and I think that sucks. I really think that sucks. There could have been ways to let 
Priest and Rhea win. They could have like put a chain around the doors of the locker room. And so at the point in the match when the Judgment Day was going to come out, they were stuck and they couldn't come out. And they could have just continued to beat up Dominic and Liv. And that way the Judgment Day could have been outsmarted, but not just humiliated, you know, not physically humiliated. But no, they just went this way and it pleased the crowd. It definitely pleased the crowd. And I loved the German crowd. The German crowd was very into it. That's the mixed match. The most predictable winners won, then they completely dominated a very new faction to do so. So let's go to Gunther and Randy Orton. And again, a very predictable outcome. We all thought that Gunther would win, and we were right. Randy Orton lost again. A lot of people were saying, oh, that's a match of the year contender. I don't think it was. I think it was a good match. Um, there were moments. There were definitely good moments in the match. I like their King of the Ring match better, but it's okay. It's great. Gunther had a very great showing in Germany. I'm very happy for him as a person. I'm sure he's going to cherish that for the rest of his life. I could tell Randy Orton was really into the crowd singing. There was a funny moment when Randy did the wave and he was like, you too now, Gunther. That was really funny. I haven't been enjoying him as a babyface, but this was one of the first times that I'm starting to actually like him as a babyface, for real. Uh, but yeah, uh, just predictable outcome and he won and then they shook hands at the end which was a little surprising Guther is a very very bad guy but he shook hands and maybe Guther isn't a bad guy maybe he's just a jerk and he does claim to just love the sport and that's what is somebody who is a good sportsman would do he shook the hands of Randy Orton and that was that that was your PLE I know I come across very negative of this PLE. I don't feel it's probably as bad as I'm making it out to be. I'm sorry guys, I don't mean to be so negative. If you guys want to see a more positive spin on this PLE, go watch Simon Miller's uh, review. He's a pe very positive guy. <laughs> but yeah, for real, I do appreciate every single one of you. Hopefully we'll get a better PLE at Bad Blood and we can just really rave on that. Guys, girls, have a good day.